what they come up with and come back with a recommendation to it. I agree. I think it's a, that'd be a good thing. It's, Carl White puts out excellent, excellent videos. There's another video that um, that we didn't have here today, but it's uh, on Greenwood because we're, we're talking about economic development. That's a good reminder. That World Series is getting ready to start, um, so Eddie's going to be pretty busy with that. But uh, uh, they've done a great video on economic development in Greenwood, and if you had a chance to look at that, but we sent out a video. We sent out a link. To that, we have to look at it. That's a basic uh, issue. I think that's a good idea. And I think that's back to um, you know, the future vision that we were talking about earlier the getting as much exposure of Cleveland County and what we have in our county and the type of people that are in our county um, with, that um, not only brings people to, to the county, but I think it also gives us tools that we can when, for you for your tool bag again to when you're talking to companies to be able to show them what we have in the county because their concerns about bringing their their employees in here that they bring because they, they always bring somebody with them and where they're going to live and sometimes we lose the, the some of the people coming in with the companies to other counties too because um, we don't have the things that they want <coughs> It's pretty hard to ma uh, imagine four years ago this thing is where it started out. And this year, it'll be on live ESPN goes going across the country. And you know, our county is tremendous exposure for all, for the county and the city of Shelby and all of them. <coughs> Any other discussion on that? Is there anything that you need from us right now? Okay, next item on here is retail tax force. We talked about that a little bit earlier, and uh, um, I'd, I'd like to talk about it just for a minute and then uh, turn it over to Susan. Um, the retail tax force is something that, that, uh, that we put together uh, to address some of the concerns that we've got. We want, you know, we, we know we're leaking a lot of retail over to uh, surrounding counties, uh, even down in South Carolina. We want to. Uh, we want to try to, to capture as much of those retail sales as we can in Cleveland County. We want to help our, our existing retailers and identify areas where we may need uh, additional retailers to come in. And um, this, one of the things that started a discussion for me on this was uh, one of the last trips to Raleigh. Um, I was meeting with a neighboring <coughs> county, uh, one of their commissioners, and they were talking about how they felt like they were in Gaston County felt like that they were not uh, capturing enough retail and they were um, they were really going to focus on that and we had a good discussion on that and, uh, uh, it, it just shows that you know this we're we're in a competitive market for that as well for the, for the retail and to get those retailers here we've got a lot of great retailers in Cleveland County now that, that I think would could benefit from um, some of the data and some of the information that we could we could get and uh, um, the retail task force really was, was the, the concept of it was to be kind of a catalyst to work with um, uh, municipalities inside the county uh, and to work with uh, retailers out in the county uh, proper to not inside of the municipality. And uh, so we met once um, and uh, had, had very good, um, uh, it was received really well by the, the people that were in the room. Uh, we had uh, uh, from we had representations from municipalities, from planning departments, uh, from uh, uh, property owners, from retailers, uh, and uh, myself and, and Commissioner Allen were both there, um, and um, it spurred off other conversations besides just the meeting that we had there. But um, recently, uh, Susan and I have talked and. and um, she is willing to to take the reins on the retail task force, and again, for the reasons I mentioned earlier, I think she would be uh, excellent at it. So uh, I'll, I'll turn it over to Susan. If you want to mention some things about it, thank you, Jason. Um, the just as Jason's pretty much covered where it is today, is and kind of how the, uh, the retail task force was formulated. You know, 
did you mention Gaston County? That's the focus that they have, and and that's where a lot of our retail leads to is into Gaston County, even maybe over to Mecklenburg County. So the the retail task force charge will be to identify and set some goals that are realistic goals and look for the low-hanging fruit of what's out in our county that we can start working on now and get the municipalities involved, identify the areas we're most concerned, and looking at the existing businesses and what can we do in our county to bring new business businesses in here that are, are retail-oriented or, or restaurants or whatever. So that's, that's really what um, the charge that everyone has right now. And from that, there will be other focuses and because um, we want to we want to make sure we're looking at the whole county we, um, is in, in helping others benefit as well the smaller communities as well and what their needs are so the, the the group will be bringing in people from throughout the county to be involved with it and understand what's going on but um, it is in the infancy stages right now and certainly we we'll keep the, the board informed of what's going on looking for in, input from the commissioners and um, and also the, the mayors and the folks that throughout the uh, the cities within the county but the biggest thing the biggest task is to to try to keep the, the sales within our county you know one of the major nail points we had back when i was on the pgc council we looked at retail sale pretty sure we've done a study our biggest challenge was population. For example, the city of Gastonia is only two to three times bigger just the city itself than what we are. And when you go look at trying to draw a new business, for example, uh, I don't know, say uh, Mass Pro, that's one of the biggest around. They're not going to relocate unless you've got a half a million people in a 50, 60 mile radius. So these are some of the challenges you got to look at. If you're, if you're looking at drawing a new business, and then what we, we were sensitive about, if you draw a large business, having a smaller business is going to hurt, you know. So you, it, it's a sort of give and take. So it, it's a good challenge, and I wish you the best, and be glad to help any way. Like I say, we we looked at this thing several years ago, didn't we, Kristen? And that was the major challenge of each time we thought we had something, they do a population study, you just, and then it falls apart because we just don't have the people. Well, from our, from our initial discussions and, and from what talking with industry leaders, they're, they're saying, you know, the, the days of the, the mega box stores are going away. They're, they're not going to be there. But if, my concern, and the reason why I think the timing is so uh, appropriate now and why we need to be looking at this um, is if you look at Gaston County and you look at where their retail is now and where it's going to, they're probably the last retail business they put up in Gaston County that I, that I can think of is Tractor Supply, which is not far from the Cleveland County Board. Uh, they put one, they're, they're coming this way. My concern is that if, if Gaston County continues to grow in this way with their retail and we don't focus on it and maybe to the west of us they start focusing on it, you get caught in between two areas that focus on retail and we're, and we're left out in the cold. We really, I think we really have to focus on making sure that our existing retailers know what our residents need, what our, where our leakage is, uh, maybe opportunities for them. and. You know, looking for other opportunities to fill some of these uh, empty stores that we've got in, in Cleveland County, empty, empty buildings we've got now, put, put some, you know, some good businesses in there. It's going to save our taxpayers, it's going to save our residents money um, because they're going, to, they're going to have to drive as far. You know, even if you have to pay a couple of dollars extra to buy something in, in Shelby or Kings Mountain, you're going to spend, you know, more than that driving the guest on your buy something. So I think looking at all those things, the, the chamber is definitely going to be a, a, a good partner on all that discussion. So I think the time's right for it. Sure, sure. I think, I, I think uh, when you were out of town, uh, Jeff and I had a chance to 
listen for the third time to the presentation by the mall and uh, finally cut through the chase and got down to some pretty pretty good stuff and and in, in that discussion it's pretty interesting what came out uh, some some of the cities were represented in that meeting had direct the impact of the mall and uh, one of the things I would suggest is that we try to consider trying to establish it in phases. We can't do everything at one time. So, you know, establish a, some degree of a phase. And one of the things that came out of the meeting I thought was very interesting, always been a pet peeve of mine, but I've never said much about it. And that was a 74 quarter from like Swainsville to Kings Mountain. And the city people who were there said, that hurts downtown shopping. And it's just, it was interesting to hear them talk about what do you mean it hurts downtown shopping? Because it, it needs cleaning up. And so it led into a pretty, pretty a, a good, solid conversation on, well, how do you clean it up? You know, the county can't do it. Uh, we can't clean that whole corridor up. Cities can't do it. State's not going to do it. So who does it? So out of all that came basically, well, if the towns are saying that the corridor needs sprucing up and cleaning up and appearance improved, why don't we think about everybody joining together and trying to do it? You know, but not, no one entity can do it. That includes some of the businesses also joining together. So I thought that was pretty interesting because I asked the question in there. I said, who cleans up the exits at Gastonia? Because I just come from Charlotte. And, uh, and Gastonia had one of their exits right there. One of the first ones, I guess. It looked like somebody had mowed a yard. You know, when it struck the yard? Like somebody had mowed a yard. And I said, who does that? Well, the words that came out of there was probably the city. So I started feeling around a little bit and I said, just talk to a guy today who lives up on the western end and he said, we can't get them to mow the grass up here. So I said, what do you mean? He said, I stopped the guy who was mowing the grass at a, and he said, why are you not going to scratch on the road anymore? This place looks like a jungle up here half the time. Then it's on 226. And uh, God said, well, I had a contract with the state and they cut me from 10 moins to 3 moins. So, you know, that guy has, he, I mean, he, he has no choice. He only gets paid for 3. So it's something I'd throw in the equation for you to think about, you know, Helping clean up the corridor up a little bit. And I, and I agree with you, Eddie. I've met with the mall folks too, and you know, they have interest in cleaning up their area up there. And he liked to use the 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 dandelion effect. He said, you know, if you clean up your dandelions and they're all gone, um, if the people are surrounding you or your neighbors don't clean their dandelions, then you're going to get dandelions back. So that's where it's the joint effort between. Yeah. And that's part of the, the task force will be looking at that, those areas as well. Good luck. Any other discussion on the regional task force? Thanks. All right, moving on down to public safety. Um, I want to volunteer fire, ta fire department tax rate discussion. And that's got commissioners on taking from that that's that been mentioned by several of us. So, it's just an opportunity for us to talk about the, the fire department tax rate uh, for the volunteer fire departments. Anybody like to tell your concerns on it or what, you, what you're thinking? Or, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I think one of the things that the board is aware of is that um, for the first time in, in, in recent history, all of the volunteer fire departments in the county are at five cents. So there is a, a, a uh, consistency across all of the fire departments in the county. It's my understanding that now every fire department is, uh, is at a five cent tax rate. Uh, 
Uh, Commissioner Allen is the liaison to the Volunteer Fire District, so she may have some insight on this. I know Commissioner Hutchins and several others of you are active with our Volunteer Fire Departments and our Chiefs and the people who serve. We have several county employees who are full-time county employees, but either serve in a fire, Volunteer Fire Department or in fact lead as a Chief. And so we have a strong connection with that group of folks. They're very appreciative of what they do for us every day. Um, the staff is planning later in the fall to engage the chiefs and to talk about uh, how the 2016 revaluation may affect each of those districts across the county and begin to do some pre-planning. And we are working with our county fire district to try to uh, store uh, fund balance in this current fiscal year so that we so that we hope that our county fire district does not spend what we know that it will not spend down uh, unnecessarily and in fact try to build that fund balance and get it into the neighborhood of, of uh, uh, close to half a million dollars but we still need to be looking forward toward 2016 and we need to have dialogue with all of them and during the budget process the guidance that I received from the commissioners was we, we're, we're glad that everybody's at five cents. We, we'd like to see there continue to be um, a, a common tax rate, and thus continue to have discussions with them to try to stay on top of this issue and determining if they've got what they need to operate on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a discussion that keeps coming up. Commissioners are aware of that. I don't know if there's a whole lot to talk about today. Staff will take any direction that the board has. If we hear of no specific direction that we've not heard before, later in the fall, Chris Green, myself, the finance director, will be visiting with the fire departments to see how they're doing, how their budgets look, both operationally and on the capital side, and we'll report back to the board. We'll also keep Commissioner Allen involved since she's the formal board liaison to the county fire district. So we'll try to coordinate that. It's making you aware of the fact that there, you know that it's an it's an ongoing issue. I think that the discussion is then really just preparing for the 2016 rebound. Mm -hmm. and, and seeing how that would impact our fire departments. Yes, sir. And if there's anything else that the board is, 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 is aware of or anything else that we need to be aware of and take direction, but it is something that was um, an issue during the budget process. It was a topic of discussion prior to the budget process. And uh, we did meet with the volunteer fire departments and we were working hard with them through the budget process, as well as the commissioners. Commissioners are, are again, we're connected in hard to these folks. And they have a good relationship across the county with the county government. Still, I don't, I don't think the fire department's complaining anything about to rebound down and see what the impact is. Mm -hmm. It's be kind of hard to. I think, I think what I just did come on, I know Commissioner Allen's a one man. I've been a few years and still, <clears throat> you know, I guess connected with some of them, but, uh, you know, uh, the difference between the fire districts and uh, Volunteers, you know, you got your fire district where they can vote and do different things in a designated fire district versus the county volunteer system. And uh, that's where it, it got out of balance that the fire districts had come up and says, okay, we we did our vote or the board of directors done this. And they said, we want to raise our taxes up. The circumstance, well, the county fell behind. So now we got them all up the same. But I think one of the challenges is going to be faced, and you probably heard on State County, that is uh, paid employees. That some of the fire departments have paid employees during the day, some don't. So right now, I think they're beginning to balance it out. So I think that's going to be a thing that we've got to look at in the future. We did the same thing when I was with the Rescue Squad. Uh, we got to the point Rescue Squad can't respond during the day. Got to have somebody, so the county got involved in it. I particularly don't like that system. I mentioned to Jeff and a couple of different type system. If ever come to that point, rather than us have county employees running the fire department do something to offset their costs and let them have their own employees, which could be a major portion. So I, I do know that uh, some of the fire departments are just waiting to see, you know, what's going to happen in, in the future because. Uh, some fire departments have to cover the other fire departments during the day and, and some of the older guys are covering and getting to the point some of the older guys just can't give it. The same thing happened in the same cycle with the rescue squad. That uh, the days of the volunteer 
is over with because people who work their job have to go to jobs and two, the new generation, younger generation come along is not is involved in so many things as Mr. Hawkins, myself, and you guys were as you know, you've seen that in some of the things you do. So I think that's going to be a challenge at some point in time just to throw it out the discussion that we sort of need to keep on that. You've probably already heard some information on it already. Yes, sir. A, a question I've got on the on the paid staff, and this is just uh, maybe if we could get clarification on this and see if this is from my understanding that if you have paid staff at a, at, a, at a fire department and they respond, they can bill to the insurance companies. The insurance companies involved, I believe. Is that I, don't, I don't know. I, I know. That, I mean, from my experience in insurance, I know that there's service charge built onto the insurance policy, like on homeowners insurance yeah. policies, and you can bill to to a car insurance if it's a car fire, those kind of things. If that may be something that could help if we can look at some some experience with our fire departments and see how much that would have generated if they had paid staff on uh, you're, you're probably at, asking the same question back years ago when they had the volunteer rescue squad okay the volunteer rescue squads could charge for the service but it wouldn't charge because it's volunteer mm -hmm. and uh, now all the rescue squads except one, I think, up from Cleveland, charges if they send an ambulance out and transport and you have injured. And, and I think there's some question about that for Cleveland right now. So I don't know, maybe something that uh, you can check on. Can we look at that and see? Mm -hmm. Shelly was the first one and actually um, went paid. But Shelly was the one, the first one that went paid, wasn't he? Because I know. King Mountain and up Cleveland, and they resisted it. Grover, they resisted it. And Boyle's Brain did too, and you see what happened to Boyle's Brain, you see what happened to Grover, both of them voted to let him. King Mount Shelby is, I guess, doing a decent job, you know. But they, they went ahead and were paid, so they had to do that. I don't know um, how many of you have ever read it. I, I have read it, but I'd be hard pressed to tell you all the information in it, but the charter of Cleveland County. And the charter of Cleveland County basically says to its citizens we will provide fire service and ambulance service. And for years and years and years, the um, Cleveland County got to make it, so to speak. It didn't cost them anything because the volunteer rescue squads and volunteer fire departments uh, did all the work, and basically they did it all donations. But if you will actually read the charter of Cleveland County, you will find out that it's ultimately our responsibility. It's not only the charter, it's a state law now that you provide medical service and fire service for your residents. That's the that's just the imagine, um, the services that the fire departments do for us. Because if we had to pay paid people to man fire service all over Cleveland County, Tax rate or the county. So well, yeah, the county for right now, they're providing outside services. Hers is eight cents and they're talking about going to ten. And I think John just said most of the fire departments now they're gonna to get to skip to the point. And we're talking about young people are not going to go through all they should not want to go through all that training and everything anymore and get them to, to recruit them. But Somewhere in the near future, we're going to be looking at putting paid firemen at the fire department to roll the truck. Well, and that, that's what I suggested. I uh, hey, suggested to get out and talk to them. Rather than being county employees, do something all set it so they hire their own people so they're not county employees. They're employees for that. I saw, I saw the way it revolved with the rescue squad and it was a mess. It, uh, the county employees working in a building, you know, control over the different things. And it's best that we can all set something or devise a plan where that employee would work for that unit and they would be responsible for it. Just like now, they contract, sign a contract, we will do this, you know. And, and then, too, with affordable health care, if we've got them out there working more than 30 hours then you got to add benefits and a lot of different things there that if they work it they can have 
two or three volunteered to do it and, and all said it. It's a good discussion. Uh, the only other question I've got is, uh, Chris, on the real value you can have, of course, figures how it's going to impact the supply next week. Stand by. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I'm not, but but I, when, when would be at, at, when could we expect to see, time wise, and I'm not trying to rush you, I'm just wondering as far as when you normally would, when would you normally have the impacts of real value? Can... You'd be looking at into the second half of uh, next year. Okay. Okay. So summer, <clears throat> early summer next year. Probably, probably around uh, July, August. Okay. Be able to get a feel for that. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion on the fire farms? Commissioners, um, your, your pleasure what you want to do. We've been here about a little bit over two and a half hours. Y'all want to take a quick break again? We'll keep on going through this. Uh, we're about not quite halfway through with our what we had planned for today. So, uh, your pleasure. You want to take five or you want to keep going? That's probably be good. Take five. Hey, take, take five. Take five. Take five. We'll be back in.